Hey everyone, this time on Tim Talks Audio, we're back in Studio One Six. We're talking panning. With the release of Studio One Version 6 and stereo tracks, we now have different options with our panning. It's no longer just the stereo balance panning that we saw in Version 5 and earlier versions. With Version 6, we now have a few options. This video is going to dissect each of these different options and kind of show you how they work and different ways that you can use them. So let's dive into the DAW. Okay, so here we are inside of our session and I'm gonna tell you right now, the blue MIDI or instrument track is just this very, very simple piano part. And the green track underneath is a duplicate of that, but rendered to audio. To show you that on stereo instrument tracks or stereo audio tracks, the controls are the same for all of them. I just wanted to have these examples available to you. So it doesn't matter, instrument track, audio track, if it's stereo, these options will be available to you. Okay, first, let's start with our default. I have the green audio track soloed, and I have some low piano notes and some high piano notes. And generally, when you record piano, it's two microphones. One is the high notes and one is the low notes. So I made sure to separate the notes so that it's a bit more extreme. The high notes are all going to be coming out of your right side, and the low notes are going to be coming out of your left side. So here it is without moving the panner at all. So you can hear it. High notes, they're definitely on the right hand side and the low notes are on the left because when you sit at a piano, that's exactly how it is. And in our recording processes or using instrument tracks, all of that is translated as well. Now let's move on to how balance takes this stereo sound and moves it around. So let's start with our standard, the balance. This is what Studio One in the previous versions and in version six starts off with by default. And we're gonna go ahead and just solo the audio track on this one because it's still set in the balance mode. So without doing anything except hitting play, and I'm just going to slide the panner from left to right. I'm not gonna put in automation or anything. I'm just gonna manually do it. You'll hear the difference in how it takes the stereo sounds and just kind of shifts it from left to right, but not in like a panning kind of way. Take a listen. So you can hear it takes what's happening in the stereo field and just all of it goes either left or right. What are the other modes? All right, well, let's get into our first one. If we right click on the panner here, and there's a bunch of different ways you could do this. If you're on a Mac and you have a trackpad, you can two finger click here. You can alt click here on Mac as well. Or excuse me, that would be option and click to get this. Uh, if you're on PC, you can just right click on your mouse on the panner itself, and then you get this menu. In here is where we can change our pan mode, balance, dual, or binaural. So we're gonna go to dual next. And now what we have is a le dedicated left and right panner built into one control here. So what do I mean by dedicated left and right? Well, if I wanna take those high notes that are on the right hand side and bring them a little bit closer to center, I can just grab the right hand side and shift them a little bit closer to center. Don't mind how it moved a little there. We're going to get into that in a second. But now my right hand is a little bit closer to center and the left is still way off on the left. So we're going to hear some high notes a little bit in the center, a little bit in the left hand speaker because we're just taking this right side and shifting it closer to center when leaving the left alone. You could do the same thing as well, but with the opposite ends, or you can actually control both ends at the same time. If we click in the center and then shift to the right to counter what we're doing, maybe we want the right to be the same, but we want to take the left hand and put that closer to center. Well, I'm going to click in the center and just shift everything. And now 
you can see I'm affecting both sides simultaneously. So now my right hand side is all the way right and the left hand side is brought in a little bit towards center. Okay, I reset it back to default. Now here's a cool thing when we're in the dual mode. When you're in dual mode and you click in the center, if you go left or right, we just saw you'll move left or right. But if you move up or down, you'll actually simultaneously change the left and right channels to either narrow or widen. And watch this, I'm gonna click and drag down to narrow the whole stereo field and both the left and right are moving simultaneously. You can see both left and right are at 41. Now, let's go even crazier because we can invert these. If we keep going down, the inside will turn red, and now what is generally on the right-hand side is now on the left and vice versa. So within here, and the red shows us that we reversed things, if we hit play now, the high notes are gonna be on the left-hand side. Pretty cool, right? We were able to just shift things around or completely reverse them. You can do the exact same thing, but in the opposite direction, click and hold in the center, slide all the way up, it'll narrow it and then re-invert it back to normal, right? Okay, so that is dual. This is very similar to the plugin dual pan. Very quickly, I pulled open the dual pan plugin where you can do just a little bit more like change your pan law, but we're not gonna get into that. I have a video about that. If you wanna see it, it's gonna pop in the right hand corner right now, uh, but you can do the same similar things, but a little bit more here. So you can see with our left hand side, we can throw this all the way right or bring it all the way left so we can link them. So it's very similar. We're gonna get rid of dual pan for now. And now let's switch to our instrument track and we're just gonna mute the audio track. And we're gonna make sure we can hear everything. And now we are in binaural mode and we'll get to this in just a few minutes. Okay, in binaural mode, it is very similar to the plugin binaural pan. When we look at it, obviously it looks different from dual, but it looks similar to balance like we saw before except underneath we now see our location. So this center is now just pushed off to the left a little bit and there's this 100% sitting right next to it. This is the stereo width of that channel. So we can do a bunch of different things because binaural actually does some mid side processing to enable this kind of feature. Watch this, if we go to the 100% and I'm just gonna click and drag, if I go up, it's going to increase the stereo width and essentially what it's gonna do is just reduce what's happening in the mids. Or maybe you have a stereo source and you just wanna make it mono. Drag this all the way down to zero and you slammed that track, that stereo track, right into the middle. That's mono for you. If we control click and put it back to 100%, the way that the panner now works is very similar to how balance works. If we hit play and push everything to the left, the entire signal is gonna go to the left. It's not like dual where we can take the left and move that independently and change where we want the left and right. It takes the entire stereo image and shifts it around. But when we go into adding a bunch of width, which we'll do right now, and I'll hit play so you guys can hear it. You're gonna wanna listen to this on your studio monitors or maybe in some headphones, because if you're on mobile or on a computer, you're probably not gonna hear this part as well. But we're gonna go play through, and we're gonna go from 100% up to 200%, and then we'll mess around with pan from here. So being able to push the mids out of the way and widen things with binaural mode can help you get a little bit more separation and a little bit more distance and obviously a little bit more width. Now, I wouldn't go too crazy. I 200 seemed a bit much for me, but also this is a very empty song. It's just this piano. So it doesn't really hold a lot of water if it was in a full mix with a full band, but you can see or hear how this could definitely play a part. Maybe you want some really wide guitars. Go into binaural mode on a guitar bus and just push it out a little bit further. Maybe go to like, you can single click here and punch in a number. 
Maybe I just want it to be 120%. I just want it a little bit wider than where it was. Or I have an instrument bass that for some reason is coming in stereo. I just want that mono. I want that straight up the center. I can go to binaural mode and slap it to zero. Now I don't need to use binaural pan as a plugin to make it mono. And I can do it right on the track itself and then go about my business of mixing the song or continuing to produce whatever the situation may be for you. Okay, now here's something else that you can do when we're talking panners. And this feature was added in and it's pretty handy, but I can see a lot of different uses, but I can also see how this can help maybe those who are visually impaired to kind of see things a little bit better. If you go to any panner, mono track, stereo track, doesn't matter, and double click on it, it gives you a bigger version of the panner. So you can see it a little bit better and maybe dial something in a little bit finer. And you can see when we're on a stereo track, we can change the mode here as well. Since we're still in binaural, we can adjust our width. Oop, and you can move the window around to wherever you need. That's brand new. I'm finding this out as we're filming. Cool. But in binaural mode, here's my percentage. I can just drag this and make it really wide, make it 100%, a little bit wider, mono, whatever you need to do. And then I just hit escape on the keyboard and I'm back to going about my business and doing whatever I need to do. This is a similar kind of thing that we've seen in Sends. If we come up here and just make a bus channel to nowhere and double click on it, now we have an increased size of our Send to be able to fine tune within here. And last but not least is the thing we saw earlier in the video. If I right click on any one of these and maybe I would like what binaural is doing and I want all of my stereo tracks to default into this mode, use binaural for new channels, that will set binaural as the default mode for new tracks. So if we go in and we create a stereo track, and it doesn't matter what it's named, anything like this, doesn't matter. You can see this brand new bass track is in binaural mode by default. Really cool. So there you go. That's a quick breakdown of the new pan modes for stereo tracks inside Studio One version 6. This is available for all users. This is not just a pro feature. So everybody, if you're using Studio One version 6, you can adjust your pan settings for your stereo tracks. That's all for now. If you found anything informative, please like and share the video. To join the community, jump into the Discord. There's a link down below. If you're looking to have me mix your tracks, check out timplansbum.com. And if you have a question, ask it in the comments and I'll answer it in a future video. Thanks for watching.